The big one that you said, though, was yeah. Spotify and podcasts. And sure. I think, personally, just from being in the space, I love Spotify for podcasts. I had one person that I did a podcast with that he had a huge Brazilian audience. When I released the podcast, everybody was asking him, like, oh, where's it on Spotify? And I normally I'm like, here's the Apple link. And they're like, no, where's it on Spotify? So that one just took off on Spotify. Right. And the thing I love about Spotify is there's many things, but their analytics are so much more in depth. I can get so much more information from their back end than Apple podcasts. Mm -hmm. The other thing too is, like you said, people are there to um, listen to music. It just makes sense. It's a convenient, like, I don't know, fork in the road to like, oh, let me go listen yeah. to my podcast at the same time. Which that already existed as a behavior. Like this is like an important point in that podcasts are essentially syndicated radio like yeah. back in the day and people were already used to going from a pop station to npr yeah. it's like you're not blowing people's minds in like a bad way they're like oh cool i already understand this experience they're just now on spotify this is amazing and so you it made complete and utter sense because we, cause we yeah. one of our clients we all we were really trying to push them to to think that way not to think about podcast is just a way to put advertising against sound, but instead to think about it in terms of, well, what is your audience? What would they be doing that would be similar to this that would increase actual listenership and, and, and time spent listening to podcasts? So Joe Rogan obviously has a yeah. huge podcast, right? Huge. And I know there was one episode or two that I was listening to, and he was talking about how the Spotify guys would come to him and be like, hey, we're starting a Spotify podcast, like, you join the platform. And he's like, what are you going to do for me? I'm just like, I'm going to be bringing you so much on this platform. So yeah. to this day, uh, I don't think he's on Spotify. And I th think that's like, hey, I've been on Apple and then obviously he's on YouTube, does really well in those spaces. Yeah. But I think it's more the the Facebook model of things where Spotify is just soaking up everybody, all of the other podcasts. So eventually everybody's just going to have to be on that platform regardless of yeah. if you want to be there or not. And the last thing I want to say on it, too, is that the fact that Spotify already has in place ways to monetize passively to its creators so i don't know how that will look for uh podcasters and if podcasters will get paid for if you have so many downloads and then if somebody has a premium account do they pay their podcasters but in the future since they already have that model there it'd be awesome if it's like that's a thing and if that happens or if it's already happening i could see just spotify overtaking apple in the podcast realm, but I think Apple's just so huge right now because they were first in the space, but Spotify is just so disruptive in podcasts right now. I agree. I am, and you probably have a view on this. I don't know where I sit right now. I feel like the podcast market is much like, frankly, the video market uh, for TV shows. There are so many. Yeah. And mm -hmm. there's some, uh, one of my clients has uh, one of their shows is connected to the number one outdoor podcast. Like, and nobody listens to it. It's mm -hmm. like, it's so small because there aren't many people in outdoor, but then you look at Joe Rogan and he has millions of people tuning into him. Mm -hmm. And so we look at that market and, and we're still like, we're still a little bit confused because as much as people are listening to podcasts, there's so many more hours than any humans could actually listen to it right now. So yeah. is it gonna narrow itself down into like TV, frankly, where you have, 10 podcasts that matter to the world and the rest of them are just like yeah. micro indie bands. Cause if it devolves into that, which I hope it doesn't devolve into like, you know, the, you know, the, a terrible version of 10 terrible podcast shows. It's just, <laughs> it's just cause when things become mass market, they tend to devolve a little mm -hmm. rather than become more powerful and beautiful. And so if it devolves into that, it'll, it'll unfortunately just become those podcasts would probably be the ones that receive the most monetization. They would drive the most subscription value. Yeah. And so it becomes almost like cable network land now, where if you own ESPN, you drive a ton of audience and a ton of value because the market is narrowed down from a thousand different people talk. Because if you go and go to sports podcasts, there are tens of thousands of them. <laughs> yeah. You go to commentary on a cable platform for news. There's six channels, right? Yeah. The big ESPN, Fox Sports, blah, blah, blah. You know, like the main ones. There's obviously other ones that are lower ones. 
But if the market devolves into that, then you know what's going to happen. Those 10 podcasts are going to control the market, have the most value and, and have the most heft. And there'll be a rotation, just like in normal TV. Ones will fall out of favor, a new one will emerge. And that's usually driven by consumption and behavioral patterns in humans. Like we looked at cable networks for a client over 30 years. And what you found is we went from, you know, or really 60 years, we went from zero cable networks to now 900 cable networks, but humans only consistently watch three, no matter what period of time wow, you're super in. super powerful what you just said. Yeah. <laughs> and so when you step back on podcasts, it's the same thing that happened in the app store for, for when we spent a lot of time with mobile gaming apps. Like there were a million studios that popped up in the, you know, the wave of mobile gaming. And then mm -hmm. every day there was, you know, I think, I can't remember what the peak number was, but it was thousands of new mobile games every day being published globally. The reality is no one has a thousand mobile games on their iPad or their phone or anything. Yeah. And it's a rotation in a handful of games if you look now and you went back and mapped casino games and then obviously like a candy crush yeah. kind of game and then something like a Fortnite or now the new call of duty mobile or something mm -hmm. like that it's always sort of similar because as much options as you give people we just don't actually like that many options and over time markets evolve so that piece of it is you have to step back on podcasts and say well where do i think the customer is moving are they going to be consuming a hundred be a theme yeah it the is and the end user <laughs> and the end user because it's like all right well where do i think they're gonna go do i think that people's daily habit is going to turn into five podcasts a week because then you can build up a market you know based on that or if you say well no podcasts are kind of going to be like you know youtube reaction videos and there's going to be a small market for them people are going to dig them for a period and they might have like a boom in a certain segment for a second but then the the interest will die down because something new will happen and that's where we're going you know mm -hmm. what i mean and there's a lot of stuff not to be like weird about it but there's a lot of stuff that somebody at like one of the big podcast businesses probably looked at was if you look at syndicated radio, the syndicated radio, do you know what that is versus normal radio? Uh, uh, whole networks, correct? No, just think about it this way. Like um, back in the day when radio was coming up, you had a guy in there on a microphone like we are now talking all day and they would rotate different DJs in. Yep. And certain DJs like a Howard Cern got so big that they could actually syndicate. syndicate. And he would shop that that show and then it would appear on all different markets. The whole nation. Yeah. And so we saw this evolution where you went from small market guy who's successful to national guy that's successful or, or woman that's successful. And then radio said, we're not gonna we're not going to have DJs anymore. We're just going to use syndicated hosts. So Howard Stern became the, you know, the 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. guy, even though he was doing it in New York and California, right? Because mm -hmm. you could get him and he was consistent. Everyone loved Howard Stern. And then poof, you had a successful show versus relying on some local person who may or may not be funny enough in yeah. the L.A. market. So you could look about, think about podcasts the same way. They basically went through what was radio, which is people just talking and giving news or talking about current events or NPR telling stories. And they chopped it up and said, okay, this is a political block. This is a drive time block, like a Howard Stern, you know, mm -hmm. with jokes and like fun, you know, fun interviews. This is uh, a sports block, you know, CBS sports. If you hear on the weekends on the radio, that's syndicated radio. It's the same thing as a lot of the podcast now. It's just structured and distributed differently. And it doesn't have, with radio, it's obviously controlled because the FCC. In this instance, it's not. It's You can get it anywhere. But then I step back and go, well, that's great that there's so much volume out there, but what are people really consuming and listening to every day? If it's just you know, like the movie business, like we pretend like there's a million successful movie producers, but you know, 80% of the movie ticket sales are from a very small set of studios, really four of them now. And so the same thing, the podcast market could evolve that way too, where you have a handful of producers controlling the marketplace and it starts sort of, sort of looks like that. Number one for each segment, number one in sports, number one in outdoor, number one in fashion lifestyle, one at number one in Joe Rogan, whatever you want to call <laughs> what he does. Joe Rogan just gets his own genre. Exactly. <laughs> and and you even see some of that evolution now. And that's why we're kind of, we're, we're not sure where it's going to go. Because usually you'll see in terms of top podcast, some of the syndicated radio guys popping up like NPR, they're usually top as well. People will go on and listen to some of their stuff and um, on podcasts. So it's like, it's sort of the same people. Are these the people that used to drive in their car and listen to NPR or 
you know, CBS Sports or whatever, and they're just listening to it on a podcast now, or is this a, a new a explosion? La yeah, a la carte. That's mm-hmm. exactly right. Podcasts I worry about, and this is the last thing on podcasts, I worry about podcasts only because it's struggled a little to, to generate really hard growth and monetization. Like the advertising piece of it is tougher because you're doing sponsorships up front. And mm-hmm. once, once you're, once the sponsorship is recorded, like I hear like Joe Rogan, when I listen to him or anyone's podcast that has sponsorships, you're sometimes hearing the same sponsor from like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. It's harder to like suss in new sponsors like with tv shows you can rerun them Mm -hmm. and then put a different advertisement in you know each break it's harder with podcasts it seems like well with so the syndication service that i use is libsyn and in libsyn uh once you hit a certain mark you can actually go in and exchange out your 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 ads ads on your entire library which that's i know on the back end when you look at it in the interface, it's like email so and so at Lipson to yeah. do this. It's like it's yeah. some, some like random some some guy at Lipson that's like, okay, you want to uh, overhaul your whole catalog? Here's my job. Like it's just like that's, that's where amazing. it's at right now. Okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I know that there are systems in place in order to if you have set up your podcast in a way that here's the before the podcast starts and here's the break. We can take those out of the MP3s and insert your new. Uh, New ads. Uh, your new ads so it, it's refreshed and that way the uh the end user or i guess the content creator can get more against the ads that they're trying to sell that's great um yeah. but i mean that again that's just like a little small piece of it let me know what you guys think down in the comments do you think there's too many podcasts out there and it's going to sink down into just a couple or do you think there's still room to grow and podcasting will take on a life of its own in the future if you want to see the rest of my interview with jason anderson the founder of choir i'll link it right here on the screen and that's on my passion and progress podcast page where i've moved my full video interviews to All right, till next episode, I hope you guys are out there living a life of abundance.